Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. We're going to spend a few plays and a number of minutes talking about Arizona State Sun Devils running back Eno Benjamin, number three. And one of the things that I like about his game immediately is his patience. He's very good at pressing and cutting. And you're going to see on this particular play how he does that. First, we're going to talk about the play design. You're going to see a guard pull. You're going to see this wing back follow. So you're going to have two lead blockers working to the left side here. See them starting to work over here. Benjamin is reading the defense as the quarterback is preparing the exchange. And you can see that little hesitation step for what would be a, like a counter type play. And you can see him work immediately to the back hip of the wing back. So he's beginning to play well with a patient approach. He's letting his blockers develop in front of him. Let's look at it one more time here. So the counter steps designed to do that anyway, but you can see that he waits long enough so that he's going to get behind the back hip of this wing back and he works to that inside. He wants that linebacker, the Mike linebacker to stay downhill towards the hash here for as long as he can. You can see even a nice little, you know, hop towards the inside to plant that's going to set up a move to the outside but that plant inside and that hop gets that defender to work downhill and as soon as that happens now he's got his wing back able to block this but instead of bouncing all the way to the outside here he takes this in steps so the next step is to press deep into the crease in between the pulling blocker the the pulling lineman and the wing back and see how his feet are like nearly on the heels of this wing back he presses deep into that so he's he's really setting this up so that he can bounce this outside he does a really good job of being able to slide laterally get downhill quickly and get additional yards out of it watch that press one more time that little hop inside and then the second press right here See how he gets his feet really deep in there. That brings this outside defender inside and allows him to clear it. He uses his free hand well to kind of swap past his blocker. And then now he's downhill. He's got the first down and he's going to get another three or four yards out of the deal. This is good work by Benjamin. You definitely want a back who can be patient and you need to be patient on counter on gap blocks you know and th this is definitely a gap block but he sets it up so well because he does it in tears instead of bouncing it all the way outside presses the first man the wing back presses the second man the pulling guard gets outside and even the little move here he's got his feet in nice position downhill as he slides laterally across uses the free hand well to set up that balance a little bit more and then just get downhill and get through trash. Well, now we're going to see some of that patience again, but we're going to look at a different aspect of vision and we're going to talk about really anticipating penetration and then also displaying good judgment in the situation. This is first and goal. They're inside the seven yard line of the Washington Huskies early in the game. You want to make sure that you score on this drive. So you want to f have favorable down and distance situations. And you can see here that there's penetration up the middle and he loses a little bit of yardage on the play. Maybe a yard. Maybe he loses a yard. But what you like right away is, again, reading the defense, seeing that the double teams, he's got a double team to the inside here and inside this right, this left hash. But there's a defender who comes free off the edge and he's playing that well. This is well played because he has... Basically, there's although there's a double team here, there's there's another defender being able to work inside. So basically, the gap near the double teams, they're all filled. And you see that he realizes that. And within the next step, he plants, opens his hips, and bounces it outside. Now he's going to get away from the defender who took away that inside gap. He's got good quickness there. But in order to do that, he has to bounce it further outside. Number eight over here is doing good job of maintaining discipline of that outside gap. And now he has to stop 
and get downhill. Now, the first thing, if we just to focus on what he did and then how he reacted to everything, this is a good play by Eno Benjamin because he understands that these gaps are filled. He's not going to be able to beat this defender downhill. Maybe he could just hit it hard and maybe get a couple yards out of it. You might want might be able to say that, but I would say odds are against it. He's probably going to get hit, hit head on by this defensive end. Why even go there? So I like that. I like the bounce outside here. Gets outside the defenders here and then the immediate turn inside. And I like this play because if he doesn't see anything available, he's not going to try and stretch this outside, risk losing two to three yards on the play because maybe he gets away from number eight, but then he has to probably lose more ground to do that. And 23 in the left flat can shoot up field and maybe be able to wrap up Benjamin and you end up in a situation where now you're in first and goal, but now you've lost three yards to begin the play and you're not in a favorable down and distance situation. You don't set up a good series that way. So instead he just takes what he can get, gets quickly downhill, nice pad level, good body lean. And he anticipates a little bit of this defender hitting him head on, but he loses very little on the play. But another thing that you can look at here as a, as a point of possible criticism, a point of nitpicking that is important when you're looking at running backs when they're transitioning from the college game to the NFL because there are so many talented running backs in the league. And so when you're judging the game by just the college standard, yes, you know Benjamin's good enough to play in the NFL, but you need to judge college backs by an NFL standard and look at what the top NFL backs do in terms of vision and footwork. The decision-making was good once he bounced it outside. But look at the initial footwork here. You're going to see him read what's going on at the double team inside as well as the defender on the right end and you're going to watch this little jump hop this little hop and then plant to the outside to open the hips i like the plant outside to open the hips but he could have done this without the hops notice how he hops that hop costs him a yard and i think that if he were able to just take a smaller step Instead of jump here, just take one step to the inside and point his toes, get outside. He could draw number eight upfield a little bit earlier. And if he does that, then he has a better chance of being able to get around the defender who's working to the inside to clog up this gap just to the left of the double team here. If he's able to point that toe... And instead of hop here, but he's working outside along the 10 instead of around the 9, he maybe brings up number 8 a little bit further to the outside. Then he can have a more dramatic, he can give himself room to make a cut downhill and have more space downhill. So this hop, it's a common thing that you see with even pro backs, but it's something that the best pro backs are able to use more efficient footwork to change direction here. And instead of being a yard here, he could be more outside here. And when he's outside here like this, he can actually press this a little bit more, give this guard or a chance to be able to work upfield to take on the defender at the second level. And he just gives the play a little bit more time and breathing room to set up. And that defender, seeing him at the 10 instead of the 9, could influence him upfield a little bit more because it gives Benjamin a little more room to, to get that outside on number eight. And then Benjamin could make the cut downhill. And I think that would have given him more room to be able to, to maneuver here. Now, you're seeing that the defender that actually tackles Benjamin is the linebacker at the left hash who comes upfield here, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So it may not have mattered overall, but I think that if you look at if you look at where he is, it even might have given him more room here to be a yard away to get downhill and get some momentum. Because if he has a little more momentum, more momentum, he'd be able to run through that defender a little bit more, maybe spin off a hit, which he's done numerous times against this particular nickel linebacker to get additional yards. So just buying more time and space. And it's the difference of one yard, but one yard makes a big difference here. So it's just about 
efficiency of footwork, efficient steps. He's very good at making these little hops and jump stops and jump cuts to set up cutbacks and press lanes. But there's times he leans on it a little too much. Good judgment on the play overall, but if you were talking about the difference between a great NFL running back and a decent NFL running back, that's an example of a difference. This next play is a good example of that difference. Now, the footwork's not exactly the same, but you're going to see him face number 25 in the hole and make him miss. So he makes 25 miss in the hole and he gets a little bit more yardage here. A lot of that is efficiency of footwork. Now, he's still doing a little bit more hops and shuffles here, but you can see that he's taking smaller steps. He's able to, to make a little bit of a slide to the outside to set up his blocker, and he's doing it with smaller steps to save more time and space. Forces the defender to commit earlier, but he's not moving that much downfield. He slid a little bit more to the outside, and then he sets that up well to be able to slide inside. So again, it's just that footwork efficiency matters a great deal. Even with really elusive backs, you know, it's nice to see guys who can make those dramatic cuts and Benjamin can do that. He certainly sees the field well. He understands down and distance situations when to take the small gains rather than risk bigger losses. But what you also want to see is that advanced footwork to get a little bit more efficient so that he buys more space and time, forces defenders to commit earlier, and then he can make more, get more yardage in an easier fashion because he creates bigger creases with that footwork. Thanks again for watching. For more RSP Boiler Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Matt Waldman's RSP Film Room, and my site, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.